after going through the interface and a few other important things, I would like to go through the workflow with you. The workflow that I recommend for the sound press production for Fairlight, okay, in, in DaVinci Resolve 15. Now, if you already are a professional working with your own workflow, as in you already have a sequence of events, fine, there are a few schools of thoughts, but if you don't have one, then I'm offering you one that always works, okay? So the absolute first thing to start with is always to have clean clips, clean sound. So denoise. And I will open a bracket here. Denoising happens during filmmaking. When you are filming, when you are... Um, during production, you are going to need to make sure that your sound is clean. You turn off all the sources of noise. That is real denoising. It doesn't happen in post-production. Now, only when you cannot um, get rid of something that we resort to the post-production phase of denoising. All right? So that's why I have here noise reduction effect and noise gate. These are two post-production techniques for redu redu reducing noise. You can reduce noise also using EQ. EQ is actually a wonderful possibility, uh, sorry, a uh, tool uh, with uh, offers you plenty of possibilities to um, do plenty of things, and I'll explain what that is. Equalizer, EQ. So for the first, most important part is to denoise your footage. Why? You cannot go to any fancy um, effects before you you get your noise out. It needs to be denoised because the second recommended step is compression. And what does compression do? It brings the noise floor up. So if you have a noisy footage, it is going to make it worse. All right? So don't think of anything before noise. Once it's denoised, we then move to the next. And I do not want you, please, when you look at this workflow and you look at these techniques and you think, okay, yeah, these are nice to have. I'll, I'll, choose, I'll choose a few. There's no choice, my dear. In this, what you see from one to five is the absolute compulsory, obligatory, I don't know what kind of words I need to be using for that, so to communicate that, especially if you're a beginner. If you're a professional, you already know that. These are absolutely necessary. You cannot talk about sound post-production if you do not have at least the five, uh, between one and five. You can... Well, if you mess up number seven, then clearly it's um, it's a beginner's mistake. But between one and five, it's the absolute minimum. Do not talk about sound post-production if you don't have one to five. Denoise is necessary because, um, okay, if you don't do compression, you're going to end up with ugly stuff that happens sometimes in television, which is loud parts are too loud and quiet parts are too quiet and end up needing to use a remote every time. That's why televisions expect you to compress your footage. Compressing is not what you would expect from a video perspective. If you're kind, kind of a filmmaker who wants to do your own sound press production, don't confuse this with compression, video compression. Video compression is bad. Sound compression is good. Okay, <laughs> so these are two completely different concepts. Uh, they, they, they don't have anything to do with each other. And then we have the equalizer. EQ is most probably my favorite tool in sound, in the whole arena of sound. It is an absolutely gorgeous, phenomenal, I don't know what, how to describe it, it's amazing. I'm not, I don't mean the EQ that you have in Fairlight. I mean the EQ as a concept. I am a little bit disappointed with Blackmagic giving us a very little, um, uh, it's quite limited. The EQ in Fairlight is quite limited, I have to be honest. But, the EQ as a concept and what you have in the track version of the EQ is amazing. It it can do it can do a lot of stuff. It change it can embellish your voice. It takes away all the rubbish from your voice. It's especially for vocals. It makes it look great. DSR is well, that's your S, yeah. The S's that are too sharp. It takes away that. Uh, it, it, DSR is kind of a distant relative of EQ equalizer, and then there's the limiter. Now, if you don't know what a limiter is, it simply it stops the dB, it stops the signal from going beyond a certain, let's call it volume for now. Okay, it's a dB level amplitude. Um, why, when I talk to you about this, I'm telling you this is compulsory, this is obli obligatory. If it is your own project, then you better have one that stands out from the crowd because the crowd is quite noisy. Um, the difference between amateur and professional projects, video, um, um, yeah, audiovisual projects, 
Now, the difference between the, the amateur and professional is number one, sound. You can work, and you do actually, everybody does have this tendency to spend 95, 99% of the time working on the editing, the visual, the image. And then we try to do something, some survival kits for sound, and we call that sound post-production. Now, this is why when there's a submission to festivals, it gets rejected. This is why when you send it to the television, you look at it and think, we can't work with this guy, for a simple reason that if your sound does not comply with these five steps as a minimum, denoise, compress, EQ, de-esser, and limiter. Limiter is an absolutely essential. Do not even think of sending any project to the television if you don't use the limiter. And if you don't use the compression. And you're gonna stand out from the crowd if you use the EQ properly for, for vocals, okay? And the de-esser is necessary. So we're talking about all of them are necessary. Number six, well, you can tell from the way I've written it, to normalize or not to normalize, that I'm not an advocate of normalizing. I don't want you to feel the need, okay? I'm not saying I don't want you to normalize. I don't want you to feel the need to normalize, because if you feel the need to normalize, it means you have messed up somewhere during production. Okay, I'll tell you what kind of mistakes these are. And if you happen to have done one, then you're gonna have to normalize. And I don't want you to reach that level, that point of needing to normalize, because normalizing, okay, some people don't normalize, but generally, professionally, most professionals don't normalize, because they're, they're expecting higher production sound quality, right? They're expecting you not to make that mistake during filming. That's why they're professionals. But if you happen to need it, it's there. I'll show you how to work with that. And number seven is the music. Well, if you think music and dialogue, mixing them is about reducing the level of the music when people are talking and then bringing the volume back again. Forget it. This is absolutely not the way to go about it. There's, I wouldn't even call it a trick. There's a, prof a proper professional way of mixing dialogue with music, which is dead simple, yet very effective. You hear music and you hear dialogue and they both go hand in hand.